open your Bibles to the Gospel of John, in the last chapter. Gospel of John, chapter 21. And let us start in verse 1. Right quick, I remind us a lot, lot, the last time we we uh, we saw the first part of this chapter, we saw how uh, John gives us a recount of the one of the last conversations of the Lord Jesus with Peter, and we said that it was very interesting to see uh, uh, how John uh, uh, records this for us and how he brings it up. In his gospel, I said in passing through this that one of the reasons I believe this takes place is because John is writing pretty close after the martyrdom of Peter. And this is uh, very reasonable because he goes on and to explain uh, one of the reasons or perhaps the main reason why Peter was martyred. Uh, it was to tell us that. It was the will of the Lord Jesus that Peter was going to give his life for his namesake, for his gospel, for his commission. So uh, I'm going to concentrate in the other half, the remaining half of this passage, which is uh, beginning in verse 15. The first verses, uh, the first 15 verses deal with uh, explaining w the context where, where the disciples uh, find themselves when this took place. We, we are told that they are in Galilee, that this is the, the third time that Jesus appeared to them in Galilee, and that they were fishing, they have been fishing all night, and the Lord have uh, called to them from offshore, and the disciples recognized that it was the Lord. It was, in fact, John who said, it is the Lord. And we are told that Peter uh, put on his outer garment because he has been fishing all night, meaning that he was in underwear when, when, when this took place. He put on his outer garment and swam from the boat to the shore and leaving the other disciples in the boat with the fish that the Lord has told them to cast the net again. And they have caught 153 fishes. So this is the uh, first a summation of the first uh, 14 verses. So we're going to concentrate in the last half of it, beginning in verse 15. Uh, I have divided this in four se se uh, se uh, sections. Uh, the purpose, uh, what I want to give to us is, is mainly the purpose of the Holy Spirit and perhaps derive a few uh, practical applications from the text. Uh, the first point is that we see in the text is Peter's restoration and commission. We find this in verses 15, 15 through 17. Then we have Peter's death sentence, verses 18 through 19. And then we find John's commission, verses 20 to 23. And at the very end, we find what the Lord has decided to give us in Scripture. Uh, we find this in verses 24 through 25. So let us read from verse 15. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend to my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter, Peter at this point was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to the Lord, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Truly I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and what whatever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hand, and another will dress you and carry you where you do, know, you do not want to go. This he said to show what kind of death he was going to glorify God by. And after this saying, this he said to him, follow me. 
Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them, the one who also had leaned back against against him during the supper and had said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? And Jesus said to him, If it is my will that he remain until I come, what is it to you? You follow me. So the saying spread abroad among the brothers that this disciple was not to die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he was not to die, but if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is it to you? These things, <clears throat> this is the disciple who is bearing witness about these things and who has written these things. And we know that this, his testimony is true. Now there are so many other things that Jesus did where, the, <clears throat> where everyone where every one of them to be written, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, aid us this morning to hear your word and that it may have its effect in us, transforming, bringing repentance, faith, and perseverance in us, Father, to the glory of Christ. As well, we pray for the persecuted saints this morning, Father. We ask for your blessing and your protection. We pray for them, Lord, for food, shelter, and medical care and medicines, Father. We ask all these things to the glory of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. So, there's a lot here, and time constrains us. But let me just remind us a little bit of the the conversation about the conversation between the Lord and Peter. Three times the Lord asked of Peter, and uh, like we said the last time, many theologians agree that uh, one each time is for each time that Peter denied the Lord. This becomes more clear when we read in the original Greek the phrasing the the first two times that Jesus. As a Peter, do you love me? He uses the word agapes. Agapes means um, sacrifice, means uh, love sacrificially. It is that love that loves sacrificially. And, and so if we were to translate this a little bit more literally, the Lord is asking Peter the first two times, Peter, do you sacrifice for me? This is a clear reference to Peter's statement before when he says, Lord, even if this abandoned you, I will not forsake you. I shall I shall be with you. Right? He asserted that he was going to die with Jesus, that he was going to sacrifice himself for Christ. Right. And we all uh, have seen, we have seen how Peter fell. So it is as though Jesus is asking, Peter, were you going to sacrifice for me? Right? Yeah, it is it is a, a gentle rebuke, but it's also a gentle reminder. It is not meant to destroy him, but it's meant to affirm Christ's love for him. And this is proven in the fact that after mentioning the issue, Jesus restores him and says, Feed my sheep, tend to my lamb. Right? This is not a, a, a confrontation to destroy Peter, but rather to, 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 to force him to face what is really what matters. And it is not that Peter's determination fell, but that Christ's determination prevail. That he prevailed because he loved him to death and rose from the dead. And now he loves him still in spite of Peter's failures. In spite of Peter's denial, he loves him. And he is restoring him and commissioning him to, to be a servant of Christ, to be an apostle to the church, to serve him. Right. So this is very important for us. So we also see that um, Peter, with this commission, receives a death sentence. Yes, this is uh, very interesting because we must understand that uh, with the commission, it is issued also a call. It is issued a, a, an order 
to Peter, and this is to follow him. And, and Peter, this uh, I dare say that this is Peter's life theme. This is Peter's life theme. Peter understood and, and grew to understood to understand this this principle that if we are going to follow Jesus. We will suffer unjustly, right? This is the theme. This is a great, the greatest. Uh, this is a great theme of Peter in his first epistle when he writes to the diaspora, to the dispersed church throughout Asia Minor, uh, who were suffering persecution as a result of Nero's uh, accusing the believers of being the the instigators of the fire that burned Rome. Uh, Peter writes. And one of the things that Peter uh, says to the church is his very words. You know, this is one of the things Peter says in verse 21 of his first epistle, chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 21, Peter says, For this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you may follow in his footsteps, we can see that this resounded with Peter because these are the very words that Jesus said to him. Uh, we read this in verse 19 of our text this morning. This Jesus said to show him but by what kind of death he was going to glorify God. Referring to Peter, John gives us that footnote of Jesus' words. And he interjects that footnote to explain that the martyrdom of Peter was not the result of a tragedy or the result of uh, unforeseen events or, or, or simply Peter was the victim of luck. But rather, John wants to assert in no uncertain terms to the church that Peter's death was Jesus. Jesus desired. It was Jesus design. It was part of Jesus' commission to Peter. And therefore, John tells us that the last thing that Jesus says to Peter is, follow me. Follow me. And he echoes these words in his letter to the church in chapter 2, verse 21, when he says that Christ has leave us an, left us an example, that he suffered unjustly for us, that we may walk in his footsteps. This resounds the very words of Jesus to Peter. This was Peter's thing. Now, it is very sad and it's very interesting at the same time that how sufferings, especially in the American context of the church, suffering is something that rarely and very uncomfortably appears in our theology. There is really not much room for suffering in our, in our theology and understanding and worldview. That we associate sufferings and see them as an abnormality in the Christian life, especially in the prosperity movement, where sufferings are viewed as an abnormality uh, in the Christian's, Christian's life rather than to be viewed as, as to be something that is normal, that is to be expected as a mark of nearness to Christ. Of course, there's, there's different types of sufferings, right? There, Peter acknowledges this. There's one thing to suffer for, for righteousness' sake, but there's a different thing to suffer for, for, for being disobedient. So this is one of the themes of, of uh, the theme for Peter's life, and we see it uh, clear here in the text. Now, it follows that we see John's commission. We see that Peter asks of the Lord, what of this man? And referring to John, we're jumping us to follow them in the conversation. It is almost as though Peter is saying to, to Christ, what about John? Is John going to die as well? And we see that the Lord answers to Peter saying, if I, if I wish him to remain, to remain until I come back, what is it to you? You know, it is very interesting because this tells us that uh, the journey uh, of others may not be the same as our journey. That each one must run his 
own race. Each one must run his own race. And, and sometimes our path may be different from one another. Sometimes we uh, uh, see that others are having a better time than us. We see that others may not suffer like we do. E each one has a different race. And we must be careful that we don't become embittered when we see others perhaps uh, not having to suffer in the same way we have. And, and we must understand that this is uh, something that is biblical. It is something that comes from the hand of the Lord. And we must be careful that we don't fall into this mentality of thinking that everybody must have the same journey. Sometimes the Lord commissions others to a different type of ministry and may not signify to them the same kind of sufferings that that we perhaps have to endure. So we must be careful that we don't become overcritical of others. Each one must run his own race. Right? This is uh, the practical application we draw from the text. For example, the Apostle Paul warns the church, warns the believers in Rome in his letter to the Roman church in chapter 14, verse 4, the apostle says, Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls, and he will be of hell, for the Lord is able to make him stand. Right? It is very important that we understand this, that uh, not everyone is called to the same type of journey, uh, that each one must run his own race, and that we must be charitable, in, in, in passing judgment of others, um, it, it, this is important for us. So it's got to be a balance so that we don't become overcritical of others just because perhaps they uh, are not called to the same uh, type of sufferings. He, here's a dramatic contrast between Peter and John. Uh, Peter was set for martyrdom to die for Christ. And John was said to remain. And we know uh, history tells us that John was the last of the apostles to live and, and died of natural causes. He was the only one that was not martyred. Uh, the tradition tells us that all the other apostles died of martyrdom, but John was said to, to remain. And this is the sovereignty of Christ in his church. So we must understand this. So John receives his commission from Christ. And this is important for us to understand. And, and, and this is why I believe that, that John writes part of this gospel as, a, as an apo, a, a, apologia, apologia as, as, a, as an explanation of the things that the church was seeing that were taking place um, in, 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 in their time. The, the martyrdom of Peter. And at the end we read that John closes with the recognition that there were things, many of the things, many things, many other things that Jesus said were not kept for us in written record. And what we must understand simply in passing through here is that what we have in Scripture is what God decided to give us. What he deemed sufficient for us to, to have and not what we fancy to know. You know, sometimes we see believers trying to find hidden messages in the Bible, secret codes and, and such. But we must understand that it is not the intention of God to hide his word from us, but that we may be exposed to it. Yes, there are things that are deep and, and difficult to understand, but... The main things are the plain things, and the plain things are the main things. You know, there are things that we will spend eternity and never exhaust. But the one, the things that God wants us to understand is that in the Bible, we have everything that we need to live a godly life and to persevere in this world. 
the, the sufficiency of scripture is one of the doctrines that is being assaulted today and that we must be careful that we preserve and never elevate our experiences over the scripture uh, this is something that it is important for us to understand as we come to the end of this gospel we give praise to god we have seen so much but the main message of john is this that jesus christ is the son of god the very god incarnated who came on the flesh lived a holy perfect life and died the death that we deserve took our place on that cross fulfilled our righteousness rose triumphantly from the dead so that anyone who will put their trust in him for salvation shall not come under condemnation but shall pass from death unto life and he will raise him on the last day let us pray thank you father for allowing us to finish this journey of almost two years through the gospel of john we praise you lord and i pray that your word will have its effect in us in jesus christ we pray amen